About a year ago, I introduced you to what is now known as the diamond architecture. And back then, I mentioned that if I was making these videos a year from then, some things would be different. And here we are. Hey, Vlad here from DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a short one, so let's jump right to it. All software architectures introduce layers in one way or the other, and the diamond architecture, which was based on the clean architecture, by the way, is no different. Now, anytime you add layers, or in fact, any kind of additional structure, it comes at a price of some boilerplate. And even though it's a good trade-off to make, let's be honest, nobody likes boilerplate. I just released a video about how we use the SBT built-in for plugin network. And throughout that video, I mentioned several times that the app that I was demoing was over-engineered. And so I meditated on it and found a couple of things that can be removed. It's Scala 3 specific though. I'll tell you all about it right after the message from our sponsors, scalajobs.com, rasjobs.dev, and softwaremail.com. Check out the links in the description below if you're looking for a job or JVM industry experts who can help you accomplish your mission. This video is also brought to you by awesome people like yourself who support me on platforms like Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or by joining the YouTube membership program. Your contributions help me pay for a video editor and a thumbnail artist who free some of my time, which I usually end up spending with you, whether it's during live streams or answering your questions on Discord. There's many of you and only one of me, so all it takes is a dollar. Thank you. Now let me show you the app real quick. As already mentioned, this is the app from the previous video. It's a simple main method which just shows you the built info, right? So it starts over here in the main. We have program.run. So if we go into program, then we see that it has method run. It has only one use case called built. Inside of it, it has a top level definition called make because we're in Scala 3, which assembles the use case called built. And inside of it, we're calling the method run. Okay, so if we were to go into make, we would see that there's a controller that has been assembled. The controller requires a boundary, which is just a trait through which it needs to go through to talk to the business logic. And the business logic requires the built info provider, which behind the scenes uses the SBT built info plugin. All right. And so uh, in this make method, we see that we're uh, injecting only one thing. But if you are familiar with the diamond architecture, you actually know that behind this thing is always a facade. And this facade uh, allows very easy uh, testing because you need to fake only one thing. However, it reduces a bit of boilerplate, especially if you have only one thing that the facade wraps. And in this case, it is only one thing, right? It's only this built info provider. So if we were to go to this dependencies thing, you'll see, well, it's a trade that just extends one other trait, right? So usually you would have multiple, but in this case, it's only one. And so it feels a bit over-engineered, okay? And also it has an issue with um, uh, tap inference over here, right? So if I were to uh, remove this dependencies thing here, um, if you are not familiar in Scala 3, the tap over here can be inferred, right? So this is actually a new boundary, right? But we don't need to specify this, right? We can just remove it. However, down there, we can't remove it because now we have two make methods that have a pretty similar type signature. And so the compiler doesn't, doesn't know which overload to take, okay? And so uh, this is one of the problems that is um, kind of not existent as, as soon as you have a second dependency. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll actually introduce a second dependency just to show that uh, in this case, type inference actually works. All right. So let's go to dependencies and let's go down here and we're going to do some like other dependency. So we're going to go down and we're going to introduce another trait. I'm going to call it other dependency or technically it should be called another dependency, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we have another dependency. Now we have an error over here because now we need to inject it over here, All right? So we're gonna go other depend, dependency, and we're gonna go like this, other dependency, like that, and we're gonna export both. We can use a comma over here, other dependency, dot star, like this, right? And so now we have a problem in the dependency graph, uh, dg dot scala over here, right? Because now we need to inject both of them, right? Because we said that we wouldn't have to. So we're gonna go like this, other dependency equals other dependency implementation make okay and we're just going to hack it together uh, over here right so we're going to go uh, object other dependency and we're going to go lazy val make which is going to create another dependency and this one should be called impl by the way all right so it's going to be new this one is also inferred right so we're going to go override lazy lazy val foo string equals foo. Okay, doesn't really matter. I just wanted the whole thing to compile. 
All right, now why did we do all of that? So just so that I can demo that if we go to the business logic now, we go over here, we can actually remove this now, right? So now type inference works. And so this is how it usually looks like. Uh, let's also do that so that it looks a little bit prettier, right? So this is how it usually looks like, right? So you just pass in all the components so, so that when you uh, have the real dependency graph, you don't even see that there is a facade behind the scenes, right? Because the facade is only useful for testing, right? So over here, this facade is kind of hidden, okay? So now let's uh, throw all of it out like this, right? Because again, this was just a demo for the type inference issue. A much bigger issue is obviously the fact that we're using a facade, whereas, you know, there's no necessity for, for the facade. Why would you have a facade for only one thing? And so, you know, the natural solution would be just to throw it out, right? But I didn't want to do this because, like, this is a bit too dramatic, right? I, I still want to have things called dependencies, uh, you know, and I'm, when I do, I'm doing my task, I want to, you know, fake, you know, the new dependencies instead of, you know, each individual component, even though there's only one component. So um, I came up with a thing. Uh, which looks like this, right? So instead of this, right, we're just going to do a type alias, right? So we're just going to go over here. Sorry, there we go, like this. So it's just going to look like this, right? So at this point, dependencies is the same thing as the as the built-in for provider. And so now if we go to the business logic, we can just throw out the whole thing, right? Because now it's the same thing, okay? So now the only thing that we need to do is we need to remove this because that, that thing changed. Right, so now it's called dependencies. And by the way, uh, fun fact about metals. So if you're constructing something like a case class, or if you're calling a method, uh, if you position your cursor in the first line of this method, right, which is over here, then if you click on this light bulb, then there is convert make to named arguments. Very very nice. I'll actually show it to you over here in info.scala. Well, actually no, in the provider implementation. So over here we see that I'm using uh, the named arguments ev everywhere actually. So if I go like this. Whoops, like that, actually, like that, like that, like that, like that. So if I save it, everything is still for, works fine, obviously, right? But if I go to the first line, and I'm using Vim key binding, so I basically clicked on the light bulb, was my keyboard, and I go like this, and it looks like that. It's really, really cool. Let me show you the diff real quick. I'm just going to open another tab, because now it's shared with VS Code. Okay, so like that. Let's have a look at the diff. So as you can see, this is the diff, right? So we completely removed the, uh, you know, the, this other factory. Uh, we just changed uh, this thing over here, and we removed the name parameter, right? So now we have, you know, way less boilerplate. Let's go back and can kill this session. I don't really need it anymore. Let's go back to VS Code. All right, now before I leave, I want to show you one last thing. If we go to the business logic, uh, very often it happens with these, you know, layers and architectures that Often you just don't have business logic, right? You're just calling the dependency. For example, over here, like there's nothing to do. We just we just pass it through. So you might be tempted to do something like this instead, right? You can just you can just export dependencies dependencies dot star, right? So instead of having these two lines, you can just do that, right? Because the signature of the dependencies, which is the built-in for provider, is basically just a method that will give you the info back and the signature for um, for the boundary is exactly the same, right? As so you can just export it. And you also might be tempted to do this. Uh, I decided for myself that I'm never going to do this because sometimes this type, this type cannot be inferred and then this line becomes very, very long and I don't like that. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do that instead. Okay. Now, uh, you can do this, you can, you know, you can do you, but I decided for myself that I'm also not going to do this. And instead, whenever I don't have any business logic at all, at least I'm just going to log it. Okay, so this is what we're going to do real quick. Okay, so let's go like this, All right? Okay, indentation, syntax, issues, there we go, okay? So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to tap to log. And by the way, tap uh, comes from Scala Util Chaining, and if you're using my generated templates in my builds uh, online around 82, I'm actually including a bunch of auto imports, auto imports, right? And Scala Util Chaining is one of them. All right, let's actually go back and finish this log over here. There's going to be a tiny private dev log that's going to receive the info, which is not a string, it is an info, and it's going to produce a unit. And so we're just going to go print line, sorry, print line, colon, and we're going to go like this, right? So we're just going to say retrieved, you know, dollar, and we're going to make it shine. So we're going to make it green, and we're going to do dollar info, and we're going to do color, color reset. Okay, so as you can see, there it is printed out, right? So now you have at least, you know, some sort of trace of business logic. No pun intended. It's not related to, uh, you know, to tracing. And that's all I have for you today. It's a pretty significant reduction in boilerplate. Wouldn't you agree? I hope you liked this video. Check out the previous one and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. 
Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you wish to contribute to free software education, please consider doing so on Patreon, GitHub sponsors, or simply by clicking the join button below the video and watch my videos before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.